Hello everyone, I am Lori with Behavior Education at Spirit Keeper Equine Sanctuary. Welcome to Serpente Sunday for August 22nd, 2021. Today I'm going to talk just a little bit about taking your snakes outside and show you a couple of examples of when I recently took some of my snakes outside. Just as a reminder, I want to go over the enrichment categories from the AZA. Remember, we've gone over these in many other videos, and they are cognitive, dietary, physical, sensory, and social, all of which can be accomplished by taking your snake outside, as long as it's safe to do so and it's not distressing for them. So why should we take our snakes outside? Well, you don't have to take your snakes outside, but it can be an enriching experience for them. They not only get physical exercise, but they get exposed to sensory novelties, things that they might not get exposed to inside the house or inside a facility unless you bring things from outside indoors. But they're going to get to experience things like smells of other animals, smells of trees and grass and rocks. And yes, if you live in a city, they're going to get to smell the urban smells as well, like car exhaust and things, which I guess aren't so pleasant but they're also gonna get mental stimulation from this experience. Remember that they're gonna get exposed to sunlight, natural sunlight and the warmth and how that feels, maybe for the first time if you've never taken your snake outside before. You can do training outside and it's a good way to generalize behaviors that you've taught the snake. Because once a snake has learned a behavior in one environment, you wanna make sure that they can generalize those behaviors in other environments. It's good for habituation and desensitization to new experiences in case you ever have to take your snake outside to evacuate your home or transport them from your house to the car to take them to the vet or if you move. And it's a great way to build confidence and resilience in your snake because they're being exposed to new experiences. They're being stimulated by maybe unexpected events or things that they encounter outside. And when they experience these things and learn and grow from them or just realize that these new things happened to them and they were fine and nothing bad happened and they got to go back inside to their normal habitat, it builds resilience in them. It's important that if you're considering taking your snake outside that you are familiar with your local environment and that's for safety considerations. What is the weather like? What's the temperature like, both on the surfaces that your snake might touch and the ambient air temperature? What's the air quality like? It's something that I've had to consider lately because we've had a lot of smoke and particulates in the air to the extent that I've even had to wear a mask sometimes when I'm outside cleaning the yard or feeding the horses. So you wanna watch that very carefully before you decide to take your snake outside. You wanna take a look at the environment your snake's gonna be in, the exercise environment. What's the substrate like? Is there water nearby? Either because your snake might need a drink and is that water safe to drink? Or do you need to put water out there for them to drink? Or do you have a snake that likes to swim and get in the water so you might wanna provide that for them? If they're not used to natural substrates like rocks, dirt, and grass, you might wanna take a station or a platform out there with you that they are familiar with so that they feel comfortable and then they can decide to explore those natural substrates on their own if they choose, but you're not forcing that on them. You wanna think about safe containment. If you have a snake that is darty, yeah, darty is a word I use for things like colubrids that just zoom off super fast or fly out of your hands or off of their platform if they suddenly get scared. You might wanna think about some kind of an actual containment system so that if they get frightened or if they get nervous or if they just get really excited by something they see or smell that they don't get away from you now tc who's pictured in this video doesn't really move that fast he's very cautious when he explores and i don't have to worry about actual containment for him i take him out on this little station that he's extremely familiar with and feels safe in and I just supervise him and I give him the time to come out and explore as he feels like he wants to. I'm not gonna force him onto the grass. But what did happen on this day that I took TC out and I'll, well, I'll add a video of that um, after I do this little lecture, but as soon as he started to get too hot, he came out of his platform and he started to look for shade. And so you definitely wanna keep in mind 
that these animals are ectotherms and the ambient temperature as well as the surface temperature is going to affect their body temperature and it really doesn't take long at all for them to get overheated. So you wanna be careful about how long you're leaving your snake outside whether or not you need to provide shade and you want to watch for body language that indicates they're starting to get uncomfortable with the temperature or with something else in the environment and go ahead and remove them from that. Then keep in mind other animals that might be in the vicinity that could hurt your snake or that your snake might hurt in return or that just might distress your snake. Now in this video, what has happened is TC has gotten too hot. It was 91 or 92 degrees outside and there's no shade there. And when I initially took TC out, there was cloud cover, but then the clouds moved off. And as you saw in the previous video, he was sort of staying on his station and slowly making his way off the station and then he would go back to it, but he was kind of staying right around the station. And then suddenly he just darted off the station while I was watching him and he just darted across the grass. And at first I wasn't sure what was going on. And then he returned to his station and he starts to try to get underneath it. And that's when it dawned on me that he was likely too hot and that he was trying to cool off and find shade because when he's too hot in his enclosure, he either wants out of his enclosure or he goes to the very bottom of his enclosure and he gets into a tub that I have down there that has no substrate or anything in it. It's just a cool plastic tub. And so what he was doing here was trying to get cool, trying to find shade. And obviously his body language and his behavior told me it's time to take him inside. And that's exactly what I did. Uh, right after this happened. Another reason that it's really good to know your local environment is because you want to know if there are any local reptiles or other animals that would carry diseases that are harmful to your snake. So even if your snake's not going to encounter those other animals or other reptiles, they could pick up things in the environment that those other reptiles have left, like parasites, fungus or other disease. So you just wanna be familiar with your local environment in regards to that. And be familiar with if there are any endoparasites or ectoparasites present that could hitch a ride on your snake or get inside your snake and then come inside your house. Also keep in mind that if you use lawn chemicals or pesticides or if your neighbors do, that you don't really want your snake to come in contact with those unless they are rated safe for children and animals. And it will actually usually say that on the packaging. Now here where I live, I'm lucky in Colorado, it's very dry, it's windy. We don't have a lot of parasites that I have to worry about with any of the animals. And we don't really have any local wildlife that carries diseases that the snakes could get. And then I live outside of the city on a 35 acre ranch and we do not use any chemicals, pesticides, uh, poisons. So we don't have any toxins in the environment. So it's very safe for me to take the snakes outside. However, I don't do it very often because our weather's not that great. It's usually really hot and windy in the summer. It's dry and we don't have any shade. And then in the winter, it's usually cold and windy. So it's a rare, nice day that I take one of the snakes outside. And another consideration is I only take the snakes outside if they are awake and active. Usually the species I work with are awake and active at night. So I really don't take them outside. But if some happen to be awake and active during the day, like TC often is, he's our super dwarf reticulated python from Reach Out Reptiles, or like Rodney, our bull snake, is usually active and awake during the day. And she's our bull snake from Snake Discovery. They're the ones that get to go outside more often than others because they're usually comfortable and relaxed outside and actually seem to get enrichment from it. And they're active and awake during the day. You really want to know your snake and what's normal for them when they're comfortable and relaxed and then know their body language when they start to get stretched outside their comfort zone or reach that red zone where they're reaching threshold or going over threshold and they're becoming distressed. So you want to make sure that your snake stays in the green and yellow zone when you take them outside. Things are comfortable and relaxed and going well, or maybe they're stretched just a little bit outside of their comfort zone, but they're returning to the green zone quickly. 
Moderate stress is okay because it helps the snakes learn and grow and build confidence and resilience, but you don't want them to stay there very long. So if they get in that yellow zone where they're experiencing moderate stress and they're not returning to the green zone within a few seconds or a reasonable amount of time for that snake, then you wanna go ahead and take them inside because what you don't want is for them to get into that red zone where they're extremely distressed and over threshold. And if that should happen because of some sudden event that was unexpected, or you weren't watching the body language or for some reason, maybe your snake just smelled something that suddenly distressed them that you weren't aware of, as soon as you see that body language, you need to take them back inside to a familiar area where they feel safe and comfortable. It's Lori with Behavior Education at Spirit Keeper Equine Sanctuary. As you can see, I'm doing some enclosure cleaning today. And Rodney wanted out of her habitat. So I went ahead and brought her outside with me so that she could get some fresh air. And she's been out here for probably about 15 minutes. And she's got to experience the sights, sounds, and smells of a horse ranch and the dog yard, because this is the yard our dogs are usually running loose in. But I can tell by the behavior that you're seeing from her now that it's time to take her in. And so I thought this was a good opportunity to show you some moderate stress behavior. She was very relaxed when we first got out here and was kind of just hanging out. But now you see she's coiling around my waist and she's trying to bury her head in me. This behavior that there's her head. So this tight coiling around something and trying to anchor herself is a, is a moderate stress behavior. As was that behavior, if you could see it on video, where she's trying to bury her head in my clothes. So because now she's starting to get in that yellow zone of stress behaviors, I'm going to go ahead and take her back inside and put her in her habitat. Now she isn't severely stressed. She's not distressed but she's starting to be stretched a little bit outside of her comfort zone. And that just tells me, because this behavior is very, very different than the behavior she displayed when we first came out, that it's time um, to take her in that she's had enough. Some other things to consider are using a cloth exercise tent outside. That's gonna protect them from the sun um, if you don't have natural shade, but it's still gonna allow them to experience the fresh air, the wind, and some of the novel scents that they might encounter in the air. But you can also use these exercise tents inside, and you can bring things from outside to put into them, or you can just make your own enrichment items to put into the exercise tents and let the snakes move around and explore inside the house. Make sure that you take something familiar with you, a familiar activity stand, a tub, a portable perch, or something, even if it's um, a, a stick or a branch or a rod or a snake hook, something your snake is comfortable with and not afraid of outside with you in case you need to carry them back inside with that object. Or like I do with TC, I set him on one of his favorite activity stands where he feels safe and comfortable. And then I just set that outside and let him decide if he wants to leave that stand or not. The experience should be beneficial for your snake, not distressful. So again, choose a time when the snake is normally awake and active. Don't go wake your snake up in the middle of the time when they would normally be asleep and search for them in their enclosure and pull them out of their hide because you think that it would be really cool to take them outside. No, let them be and when they're active and alert and awake and they're maybe at the door or it's a time when you would normally interact with them and they're comfortable and relaxed inside, then it's okay to take them outside. Always be present and always supervise when your snake is outside. Don't leave them alone for even a few minutes because they can overheat extremely easily. And then you don't know what other things are outside in the environment that maybe you weren't aware of that could harm your snake or that could just distress your snake. So always watch them, stay there, be present with them and supervise what's happening. But stay safe and have fun, both of you, you and your snake. Thank you so much for watching. Always be kind, love your animals, and contact me if you have any questions. You can reach me at behavioreducationllc at gmail.com, at behavioreducation.org, or via Facebook or Instagram Messenger. I'm also on YouTube, Twitter, and LinkedIn. 
Thank you so much.